afternoon. In yesterday, we discussed uh, some of the recursive uh, definitions. Today, we will start with some well ordered formulas. In the study of logic, you are already familiar with the set and uh, logic concepts. The following are the well formed formulas. The components of a compound proposition, the tautology of T naught, tautology means all the values, any values you get a T then positive, then also the contradiction that is F naught and the sum of the symbols here, the negation P, P R Q and P and Q and P implies Q and P double implication that is negation, conjunction, disjunction and implication and double implication. These are all the well formed formulas, P and Q are themselves a well formed formula. If you are assigning some values, we get a some the related values. That is why we say that it is well formed formulas. The above definition of a well formed formulas is recursively in nature because the fourth category of the well formed formulas are constructed with the aid of those in the first three categories. This definition can be used to find whether or not a given compound proposition is a well formed formula or not. Now, we give some uh, examples related to that. Here, if P, Q, R are primitive statements, prove that the following are well formed formulas. Here, this P, R, Q tends to T naught that is uh, tautology and negation of Q. Here, here P and Q are the primitive statements. It is a, we know that it is a well ordered formula P, R, Q is a well formula, also R is a primitive statement, then negation of R is a well formed formula. Consequently, this function is again a well formed formula. Finally, we because we define the well formed formulas in the this one, this is a well formed formulas using this condition here. <coughs> First, P and Q are primitive statement, then this is also well formula and R is a primitive statement, negation R that is also well formed formula. Consequently, this is also well formed formula. Finally, since this is also well formed formula and this is also well formed formula and that implication is also well formed formula, that is a proof. How to check? Similarly, in the second one here, here R P R is a primitive statement, F naught is also a compound proposition, is a well formed formula, P is a primitive statement, Q is a primitive statement, negation is Q is a well formed formula, because we use the symbol. Then since P is a primitive statement, then this is also, because the symbol is used, then it is a well formed formula. Also, since R is a primitive statement, R and this formula F naught is a well formed formula, consequently negation of that is also well formed formula. Finally, because we are choosing both left and right, finally since P and negation R is also the left hand side, this, this is also well formed formula is a and negation of that is also well formed formula, this is also well formed then this conditional, the biconditional is also well formed, then this statement is a well formed formula. These are the some how to check the well formed formulas. Now, we will go to some recursive definitions related to, you already familiar with the definition, the recursion. What is recursion? Recursion is a principle closely related to mathematical induction. In a recursive definition, an object is defined in terms of its itself. We can recursively define sequence, functions and sets, we already known in the previous classes. We give some examples related to set here, the sequence a n of powers of 2 is a given by a n equals 2 power n for n equals 0, 1, 2, etcetera. The same sequence can also be defined recursively. How? First, you can start with a naught, put n is equal to 0, you get 2 power 0, 2 power 0 is 1, 
then you get a naught equals 1. Next, if you put this can be written as in the first term into the next term, the last term is a n plus 1 equals 2 times a n. This is in a sequence form that can be represented in a recursively in this fashion. Obviously, induction and recursion are similar principle. We can use the following method to define a function with a natural number as its domain. Specify the value of the function at 0. Second, give a rule for finding its value at any integer from its values at smaller integers such a definition is called recursive or inductive definition. We give some examples related to that. If you put f of 0 equals 3, f of n plus 1 equals 2 times f of n plus 3, then f of 0 is equal to 3, then f of 1 become here this is 2 times f of 0 plus 3, then 2 times f of 0 you plus 3, you get 2 times into 3 plus 3 means that is 6 plus 3 that become 9. Next, if you put uh, n is equal to 1, you get f of 2, f of 2 is equal to 2 times f of 1, then you already find the value of f of 1, that value is equal to 9, if you substitute it there, then that become 2 times 9 plus 3, that become 21. Similarly, we can evaluate the value of f of 3, put n is equal to 2 in the recursion formula, you get 45. In f of 4, similarly 2 times f of 3 plus 3, that is 2 times 45 plus 3, that becomes 93. These are some of the examples of recursively defined functions. How? Now, we give you one problem related to this. How can we recursively define the factorial function f of n is equal to n factorial. Put f of 0 is 1, f of n plus 1 become n plus 1 into f of n. f of because it is in a factorial notation, you know that factorial notation is 1 into 2 into 3 etcetera, n can be represented in n factorial. Next, if you put f of 0 is equal to 1 here, then f of 1 become what happens? f of 1 plus 1 is 2, then that is f of sorry 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 into f of 0, put n is equal to 0 first. If you put 0, you get f of 1, 1 into f of 1, that is also 1, you get 1. If you put n is equal to 2 here, then you get f of 2, 2 times 1 that is 2. Similarly, if you put f of 3, you get 3 times f of 2, 3 into 2 into 1 will be there, that is a recursion will be there. In the first one, 1 will be there, in the second one, 2 into 1, in the third one, 3 into 2 into 1 will be there. That is multiplication product is 6. Then, if you represent 4, f of 4 is 4 times f of 3, 4 into 6, 4 into 6 is similar to 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. This is same as 4 factorial. In general, we can write it as f of n. We already discussed in the last class the Fibonacci numbers, the famous example related to Fibonacci that is a recursion relation. Here, we give a relation again that is f of 0 is 0 and f of 1 is equal to 1 then f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. And f of 0 is 0, if you put f of 1 equals 1, because here 1 minus 1, you get here the value, why it is start, it is n is greater than 1, that is the real condition is there. If you put f of 1 is equal to 1, if you put n is equal to 1 here, then that become f, sorry, n is equal to 2 f of 2, f of 1 plus f of 0, that is 1 plus 0, that is 1. If you put n is equal to 2 here for Fibonacci, we need n minus 1 is 2, n minus 2 means that is 1, you get 3, 
1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Similarly, if you put n is equal to 4, you get 3 and f of 5, you get 5 and f of 6 become 8. Similarly, we get the numbers. The recursively defined sets, what is the meaning here? If we want to recursively define a set, we need to provide two things in our mind. What are they? First one, an initial set of elements. The second condition is the rules for the construction of additional elements from elements in the set. Next, the example, we give you some examples related to this. Let S be a recursively defined by 3 belongs to S, x plus y belongs to S, if x belongs to S and y belongs to S. Here, x plus y is a one term, it is in the recursively, x is also there and y is also there. There is a addition is added there. S is a set of positive integers divisible by 3. This is the main condition here. S is a recursively defined by 3 belongs to S. 3 means the multiples of also there means 3, 6, 9, etcetera. Then definitely x plus y in is divisible by 3 because 6, 9 tal will be divised, divided by 3. Now, we give you a proof for that. What is the proof? Usually, we can give by induction method. Here, we started with let A be the set of all positive integers divisible by 3. To show that if A is equal to S, we must show that A is contained in S or S is contained in S. Means, both if it is inside or this is inside that means then therefore, both are equal. It is the set theory concept we applied here. The part 1, what is part 1 of the proof is to prove that A is contained in S. We must show that every positive integer divisible by 3 is in S. We will use here mathematical induction to show this. Let P of n be a statement that is 3 n belongs to S. What is the basic step? First, we check that P of 1 is true. You know that mathematical induction, there are two steps. One is basis method, another one is induction step. Here, we started with basis step, put n is equal to 1. We get P of 1 is true because 3 is in S. In the induction step, to show that P of n is true, then P of n plus 1 is also true. What is the assumption here? Here, 3 n is belongs to S. In place of n, you can take T k also, but here we directly use 3 n is in S. Since 3 n is in S means, 3 is in S, n is also in S. That it follows that recursive definition of S that 3n plus 3, 3 belongs to S, 3n belongs to S. Therefore, we can take 3 as a common factor 3 times n plus 1. Means, 3n is in S means 3n plus 1 is also in S. Means, it satisfies the inductive step also. This conclude that part 1 A is contained in S. In the second part, to show that S is contained in S mean, A means, again here also we use the basis step. To show that all initial elements of S are in A means, 3 is in A, that is true. Always because 3 is an element is lying in that, means definitely it is true. Next, what is the inductive step? x plus y is in A whenever x and y are in S. 
if both x and y are both in A, it follows that 3 divides x and 3 divides y. Means, we know that in uh, basic theory that is A belongs to x and A, P divides x and P divides y means P divides x plus y that is the induction steps we can use we get the 3 divides x plus y means this is the conclusion of the part 2 S is contained in A. Means this is contained in that that is contained in that means definitely both are equal. This is one of the example we illustrated for Reckon's relations. Next we give another examples related to this. The well formed formulae of variables, numerals and operators from plus, minus and this composition slash and this are defined by the symbol x is a well formed formula. If x is a numeral or variable, we already discussed the conjunction, disjunction and implication are all well formed formulae. Here, x is a well formed formula if x is a numeral or variable. Then, if f and g are the functions formulae, if added f plus g, f minus g, f star of g, and f divide g and f condition g are well formed formula if f and g are. With this definition, we can construct the formulae such as x minus y, z by 3 minus y and z by 3 minus 6 plus y means we can use more than addition and subtraction or division any one of the relations as a well formed or well defined formulas and also z divides 2 star of g that is a multiplication minus 6 plus 5 are the well formed formula. These are all the well defined formula. Now, we can define using this condition we can apply to recursive algorithms also. The recursive an algorithm is called recursive. If it solves a problem by reducing it to an instance of the same problem with smaller input, then we say that it is an recursive any algorithm is a recursive algorithm. We give an some example related to recursive Euclidean algorithm. You know that Euclidean algorithm here G C D of A comma B, A and B are non negative integers with A is less than B means G C D means greatest common divisor. Then if A equals 0, then G C D of A comma B equals B. Otherwise, else G C D of A comma B is equal to G C D of B modulo A, then you get A. In the sec, this is the one simple example for GCD recursive algorithm, Euclidean algorithm. Next one is you already familiar the Fibonacci sequence that can also be written in the form of recursive Fibonacci algorithm. First, what is the procedure? F i b o, n is a non negative integer. If n equals 0, then Fibino 0 equals 0, then else if n equals 1, then Fibino of 1 equals 1. You know that f of 0 is 0 and f of 1 is equal to 1, that can be represented in this fashion. And Fibino else n, if Fibino of means f of n minus 1. Fibino of n minus 2. This is the representation in a algorithmic nature. That is one example. Now, we shown the recursive Fibonacci evaluation. We check the evaluation of this. We started with f of 4, then f of 4 is 2 values f of 3 and f of f of 3 become f of 2 
and another one is f of 1. Then this is f of 0, f of 3 become f of 1 into f of 3, then f of 4 become f of 2 into f of 3. Then again f of 2 become what is that 1 less always f of 1 into f of 0. This, are, this is the one recursive Fibonacci evaluation black diagram that, that can be represented in a tree notation. This is the procedure iterative underscore Fibonacci n is a non negative integer. If n equals 0, then y equals 0 else begin with x equals 0, next y equals 1, then for i equals 1 to n minus 1, begin you can use this then program form z equals x plus y, then x can be represented equal to y, then z equals y equals z, then this is the end of the procedure for algorithm of a Fibonacci iteration. Uh, end of y is the nth Fibonacci number. For every recursion algorithm, there is an equivalent iterative algorithm also. A recursive algorithms are often shorter, more elegant and easier to understand than their iterative counterparts. That is why we can use recursive algorithms must be it must be smaller not bigger. However, the iterative algorithms are usually more efficient in their use of space and time. Now, we will give you the recursive definitions and some applications related to recursive. related to set theory. The usual way of defining a set is a specify some property satisfied by all its elements. For example, an integer may have the property of being even and so we can talk about the set of all multiples of 2 that is even numbers that is 2, 4, 6 etcetera that can be represented in a notation, set theory notation that is set of all n such that n equals to k for some k belongs to integer. The definitions, the recursive definition, the set is defined as a collection of elements in our universal set that have a certain property. The drawback of this kind of definition is that it does not give any information about how to find or build the elements of the set. That is why we will see how to generate the elements of a set. This is called definition by recursion. We go to some applications related to chemistry that is atoms everybody known you have studied in your PU classes as well as in your first semester course in chemistry. In chemistry every chemical element is a different kind of an atom with a different number and arrangement of electrons. Chemical compounds consists of combinations of elements. Not every combination is possible, the allowable combinations depends on the arrangements of electrons in the atoms. This is a non mathematical example of the pattern that we find in all recursive definitions. We have one or more basic building blocks or atoms and we have one or more permissible ways to combine the atoms in order to generate more complex things. The set of even integers, you all familiar even and odd integers, everybody knows this. To give a recursive definition of the set of even integers, 
think about how to generate even integers from the simplest integer. What is the simplest integer? That is starts the name with 0. Even integers are either positive or negative. The positive even integers can be generated by adding 2 to 0 one or more times you get. Means, you can start with 0, 0 plus 2 you get 2, then again 2 plus 2 that become 4, then 2 plus 6 plus 2 you get 8 etcetera, you get a even integers. That is it, negative even integers can be generated by instead of adding, if you subtracting from 0, then you get the negative. That is 0 minus 2, you get minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 and minus 8 etcetera. The set of even integers, so the basic strategy of our recursive definition of the set of even integers consists of two steps. To specify an atom namely 0 and to say how members of the set are to be generated from the atom 0. These are the two points you must remember for the basic strategy of recursive definition. Namely, if k is the atom or some number already generated from the atom, then k plus 2 or k minus 2 are numbers to generate. That is the uh, important thing we must remember to generate it from the atom. The factorial function, let z plus set of all integer positive integers that is 0, 1, 2, 3 etcetera be the set of non-negative integers. Then we define a function f is a mapping from z plus to z plus means positive integers to positive integers be a factorial function. Then we already gave this example in the previous uh, slides that is f of 0 equals 1 and f of n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 into f of n. We defined that n factorial f of n is equal to n factorial means you get if you put n is equal to 1 you get 1, n is equal to 2 you get 2 into 1, n is equal to 3 you get 3 into 2 into 1 you get that is the function here it is defined f of n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 into f of n that is the factorial function. The factorial function is an example of a function having a recursive definition. Anybody ask which is the simple example you can give that function is a recursive definition means you must tell it is a factorial function it means f of n is equal to n factorial it is, it is a mapping from positive integers to positive integers. That is a simple thing you must explain. Next here the basic building block of the factorial function tell us that and on the input is 0 the function outputs f of 0 equals 1. <coughs> the more generally the function can be used the input n belongs to positive integers to calculate the output for the next input. That is n plus 1 belongs to integers and should be should set f of n plus 1 equals n plus 1 into f of n. This tells us how to work out say f of 3 means we cannot find here directly f of 3 or f of 4 we need the recursive things. What are the recursive thing? We can start with always the base things. What is the base thing here? We can start with 0. What is f of 0 here? If you put 0 here, that is f of, if you put f of 0 is 1 we already known. If you put f of 3 means you get 3 into f of 2. Means we get come back, that is backward method of finding the inputs. That is f of 3 equals 3 times f of 2. What is f of 2? f of 2 is 2 times here n plus 1 into 
f of n means f of n n is equal to you are putting 1 then 2 into f of 1. What is f of 1? f of 1 is here n is equal to 0 1 into f of 0, f of 0 is 1 then you get 3 into 2 into 1 that is 6. This is the backward method of finding the factorial function. Our definition gave us the item from which to start and told us how to generate the rest of the function. Now, we give some examples related to them languages. The parenthesis languages a set of strings over a alphabet is called a formal language. The most important examples are programming languages for computer. This is one of the example related to computers. Here is a very simple and not very useful. That is also you must remember exactly we cannot use this, but it is needed. In between some function will be there, then this parenthesis language may be useful. Example of a formal language is over the alphabet a equals here flower bracket and small bracket is used. We call that language P for parenthesis. As atom take the empty string lambda, thus lambda belongs to P. Next, if x is already in a string in P, already in string in P, then x that small bracket p is also in also is in p also. The string of the languages are lambda this uh, open uh, small brackets again two brackets three brackets that is etcetera that can be extended that is recursive parenthesis is recursive. In other words we generate longer strings we generate longer string by adding more parenthesis on either sides, left or right. Our definition as again started by giving building blocks and continued by describing how to use previously generated things to build new things. So, it is a recursive de definition. This is one of the uh, language parenthesis language example giving some uh, some of the recursive definitions there are actually two parts to every recursive definition this must be remember always we must give one or more atoms as a starting point you we observe that in every recursion formula there is a induction starting points will be there the starting is already we all always defined f of 0 or a naught, a naught is equal to 1 or any one value, one or two values we all always mention, then only we can write the recursive definition you already observed in the previous examples. We must say how to previously generated items can be used to build new items. These are the two important points we must remember to recursive definition. We must keep in mind that the only items in the recursive generated sets are those which can be built from the atoms in a finite number of steps. This is one of the important thing. The only items in the recursively generated set are those which can be built from the atoms is a finite number of steps, not infinite. Nothing else gets to be member of the recursively defined set. Next, there is another example that is parallelendrome language. Consider the alphabet A equals, this is related to set also, if A equals set of all A comma B, let L be the set of parallelendromes by which we mean strings over A that are spelled the same forwards and backwards. For example, here 
means we can start with left to right or right to left that is palindromes a b b a and b a a here b a a b are palindromes because the sequence here a b b a is there that is a b b a that is written as b a a b because the sequence are unchanged if we read from the right or uh, to left instead of from left to right you can see here a b b a here b a b b a here also b a a b b a a b that is the palindromes a palindrome language a recursive definition of l might look like lambda belongs to l it is in the palindrome language and a is also in that l and b is also in that if x belongs to l then a x a belongs to l a x a belongs to l you can see a x a or you can read it at a x a also and b x b or b x b that is same that is l the first line tells us that we have three atoms what are the atoms lambda a and b the second lines tells that we have a palindrome because it is a palindrome definition that x then we can get from a longer palindrome by striking the same letters on both the sides thus the strings l r lambda a b a a you can read a a a a b b a a a a b a b a b and b b a then a a a a will be there then a b b a similarly we can define so many palindrome language next there is another examples in binary numerals consider the alphabet a equals 0 comma 1 consisting of two binary digits 0 and 1 that is a binary digits usually we can use in fuzzy or anything we need this 0 and 1 that is a binary digits suppose the language l consists of all strings over e that represent positive integers such strings are called binary numerals then what is recursive definition of l would be if one belongs to l we started with recursive here one belongs to l if some x belongs to l language then x o belongs to l because x into 0 is that that is o or 0 x into 0 belongs to l and x in because there are two digits will be there x into 1 belongs to l what is tells here here one is lying in that sorry here one is lying in that l and also this language is there thus the binary numerals are 1 1 0 1 1 1 0 0 again 1 0 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 that is recursively we can write here 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 etc of course we know that the binary numeral 1 represents the number 1 10 represents 2 and 11 1 1 you know the notation of binary digits 1 10 2 can be represented by two digits number that is 10 and 1 1 represents 3 and 4 can be denoted you know that 4 where can be expanded in that 1 2 3 and etc so on we can define this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 that numbers the decimal numbers can be represented by this way you know that numerical numbers for example the binary numerals 1010 stands for the number that in the usual decimal notation we should be calculated as 1 into this is 2 power 3 always we can start it with the left 2 powers here 1 this is 2 power 0 2 power 1 this is 2 power 2 then 2 power 3 that is we calculated as 
we get the numeral value. What is that here? Actually, we get uh, 1010 is there. Means here we can start it with uh, started with always the left hand that is 2 into 2 power 0 into 0 plus here 2 power 1 into sorry 1 into 2 power 1 plus here 0 into 2 power 2 plus 1 into 2 power 3. Here 2 power 0 is 0 2 power 0 is 0 plus 2 power 1 is 2 plus 2 power 2 is 4 plus 8. 2 cube will be there 8, 8 plus 4 plus 8 and that is 14, you get this one, 2 plus 4, sorry this may be here, 2 power 2 that is 0, then the value is equal to 10, because 2 power 4, two, 4 into 0, this is 2, 8 plus 2 is 10. Similarly, we can find 1, 1, 1 will be there means, if you take that is 2 into 2 power 0 into 1 plus 2 power 1 into 1 plus 2 power 2 into 1 plus 2 power 3 into 1, then 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus that is uh, 2 power 0 is 1, then you get 1 that is 10 plus 15, this is the 15. These are the values you know that how to find the binary to decimal. The non-negative integer 1. We know that z plus the positive integer 0, 1, 2, 3 is the set of all non-negative integers, but if someone asks us what are the numbers exactly, then a recursive definition useful in this regard. Let us take 0 is equal to empty set, empty means nothing will be there, that is the meaning you must remember the empty set. Let us take the successor of the set x. To be the set s of x equals x union of x, then we may define z plus recursively in two steps. 0 belongs to z plus, if k belongs to z plus, then s of k belongs to z plus, that is integers. Let us, this tells us 0 is the autumn from which the set z plus is generated and the subsequent member of the integers are generated by forming the successor. So, that 0 s of 0 s of s of 0 that is a parenthesis here we used. Then how to the how sorry here you get the the step the z plus. Next, how do the non-negative integers 0, 1, 2, 3, etcetera related to the elements 0 that is positive. Now, we are non-negative 0, s of 0, s of 0 generated by the recursive definition. The number immediately follows 0 is s of 0, but this is the number we usually called 1. So, 1 equals s of 0. But what set is this exactly? Well, we say that s of 0 is 0 union of 0, empty set. This is empty union, empty, you get empty because union is again you get both the sets, then you get 0. This is not 0 actually, this is 0. 0 union empty, you get 0 here. So, that 1 equals, that is 1 element is present, that is 0 is in the set. The number following 1 is s of 1, that is s of s of 0, which is generated from the 0 in two steps. This is the number we usually call 2, 2 equals s of 1, s of 1 is always we represent 1 union of the set 1, then you get 1 is that 0 element, that 0 is present in that set. union of that set 1 then union is both the elements that is 0 comma 1. So, that 2 equals 0 1. Similarly, we have that what is the number s of s of s of 0 that is 3, 3 means s of 2, 2 union of 2, then 2 is 0 1, then another number will be that 0 3 can be 3 elements can be denoted by 0 1 2.
only we get for 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. These are all the recursive definitions, we get the all the elements. The non-negative integers 3, for any k belongs to integers, we call the s of k is the successor of k. We may write the k plus 1th value is for the successor of s of k of k. The definition of integers tells us, positive integers tells us, except for the autumn 0, every other non-negative integer is a successor. Instead of saying that k plus 1 is the successor of k, we may say that k is the predecessor of k plus 1. 0 does not have a predecessor of in z plus, because we do not have any other number in positive integers. The non-negative integers are generated from the autumn 0 by the successor function s yes, from positive integers to positive integers, which is given by s of k equals k plus 1. Since, the notion of predecessor seems to be the inverse of successor. We may wonder about the defining an analogous predecessor function, predecessor z plus to z plus that is the inverse of s yes, positive integers to positive. The problem is that predecessor which would be not be defined for the input 0. In case like this we have to define predecessor of z plus to z plus to be the function whose domain is z plus minus 0. If k is the predecessor, we may write k minus 1 for that predecessors. These are the things we give in examples, the recursive definitions. Today, we discuss the important terms related to some parentheses and also autumns and even and odd integers in the recursive definition. These are, are the some of the definitions related to recursive and also the application of mathematical induction and also we discussed some of the well ordered principles and well ordered uh, definitions related to recursive and mathematical induction. We used a uh, lot of application, any formula can be solved by direct method, another one is indirect method and contradiction method as well as mathematical induction method. This is one of the important thing, uh, some of the applications also we used to find the recursive definition as well as well ordered formulas and also we discussed the mathematical integers, integers also we discussed in this chapter. Thank you.